I want you to ask yourself a question. How do I learn best? If you had a test in two weeks' time, how would you revise for it? Would you read your notes over and over? Or maybe you write your notes out? This presentation is all about working in a smarter way, so that when you try to recall information, your brain finds it more easily. It's a type of brain training called metacognitive strategies, but I like to think of it as brain training. So the great thing about your brain is that over the next 10 years or so, it will never be better at picking up new information, and the brain's like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. But the way the brain stores information can be a bit annoying. How many times have you sat in a test and blanked? You know the information. You're sure you do. You just can't recall it in that moment. Panic. I call this a kind of brain fog. Your brain struggles to find pathways to the information. The information most at risk of the fog? Your short-term memory. All the stuff that you tried to cram the night before the test is the highest at risk of brain fog. Yet 20 minutes after the test, your brain clears and the information comes back to you. The brain is trying to make pathways to the information, but the fog makes it lose direction. The strategies in this presentation help to blow away that fog and make the pathways to the information easier for our brain to find and help us to store the information in longer term memory banks. If you were asked to recall a favourite memory or pastime, like Christmas or a birthday, the chances are you would recall this information as a picture in your mind, rather than a bullet pointed list or essay. This is because your brain likes remembering things as images. Metacognitive strategies make use of the fact that your brain likes recalling information in this way. So a few of the metacognitive strategies I want to briefly show you today are Mind maps. They're a really good way of sorting information. Make sure you add colours and even little drawings. This will make it easier to recall this information, as your brain will store this info as an image rather than just writing. You're forcing your brain to work harder to store the info. Memory champions who can memorize 11 decks of cards commonly do so using a technique called memory palaces. They organize the information within their brain and store it in a certain location within their memory palace. To recall the information, they can walk through their memory palace to rediscover this information. Other methods could involve turning an essay plan into a drawing. Rather than memorizing the essay itself, which is very prone to brain fog, making us forget key parts, the image, which is easier to remember, will help us recall all the parts of the essay we need to write down. Anytime you use graphics as part of your strategy, they are called graphic organizers. But that's not all. We can use anagrams and link these with graphics to then help us store and recall key facts. Similarly, we can use methods such as this triangle, which is also a graphic organizer, to store and recall hierarchical facts. All of these techniques will help you learn and recall important information. So I want you to keep an open mind about these strategies. Sometimes the brain can be a bit stubborn when it comes to trying new things. Remember, this is a brain training strategy. This has been really successful and there's a lot of proof out there that shows that it helps learners of all ages. But you may need to convince your brain to take that step. By working out what works for you, you will learn more efficiently and effectively save yourself a lot of time, whilst also achieving a deeper learning. Thanks for listening.